for a little while now, we have been left in the dark regarding the official announcement of Season 2 of the Porsche Esports Super Cup. However, mid last week we finally got that announcement we were all waiting for, and Season 2 has officially been confirmed to what is quickly developing as one of the most competitive sim racing esports competitions on any platform, with further information regarding Season 2 of the series coming on December 7th. However, the announcement got me thinking about a slightly different topic altogether. A lot of successful esports competitions currently out there including the Porsche Esports Super Cup, F1 Esports, the Gran Turismo World Tours and even the V8 Supercars E-Series have grabbed sim racing and put a very different spin on it. Sim racing as we know it is all about replicating the real world as closely as we can, trying to replicate it to the very minute details. To use an example, in the case of Formula 1 2019 by Codemasters, if you wanted to replicate what we watched Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc doing 20 weekends a year, we would set the race distance to 100% in length, turn on struck penalties, enable simulation damage, and realistic tyre carcass temperatures and wear, just to name a few things. For us, this creates a 90 minute to 2 hour race that goes beyond just going flat out on track. It really allows you, as the driver, to attack the race in a multitude of different ways. Sure, you could drive hell for leather and push for purple sector times but make more pit stops than the 2011 Spanish Grand Prix, or you could do what most do and drive 5 seconds a lap off the pace conserving tyres, but do the race on a single stop simply to satisfy the tyre regulations. This is what sim racing is, replicating the real world as closely as possible. However, what we often see esports competitions doing like F1 Esports and the Gran Turismo Nation and a Manufacturer World Tour live events is actually the complete opposite. You don't see two hour races here. In fact, you're calling the race an endurance round if it goes beyond half an hour. Relatively locked in strategies, an emphasis on raw pace rather than tire life management and a much bigger focus on being engaged in a close, hard fought battle with your fellow drivers wheel to wheel on track rather than in the pit lane. And for today's topic, this is exactly what we are talking about. Sim racing and sim racing esports are very quickly developing into two very different categories and whilst I am sure I speak for the extremely large majority that we would like to see both of these succeed in the long run and that both have their pluses and minuses, which of these two approaches is more likely to draw attention to our sport? Sim racing with its longer races and more realistic approach is a brilliant platform to draw those from the real world of motorsport and lure them into the virtual world. Think of events like the R Factor 2 24 Hours of Le Mans for example, that would be much more appealing to a motorsports fan than the Porsche Esports Super Cup would be. But why exactly do these esports events go for these very unique formats if they are not drawing in the motorsports crowd? The Porsche Esports Super Cup is a great example of a big series that rubbed a lot of the more traditional races the wrong way, with a two race format, with the first race being 15 minutes long and the second being half an hour long. So far, this doesn't sound all too different as to something we would see in the real world, but the big kicker in the Esports series was that the qualifying results for race 1 would be inverted for the top 8 finishers. So if you had the fastest lap time in qualifying, you would actually be penalised in effect for race 1 and would actually find yourself starting 8th on the grid. A lot of people didn't understand why this was and what the purpose was, but the answer is fairly simple. It was put in place to create more overtaking, more drama and overall a different dynamic to what had been tried in the past. And at the end of the day, more drama to a series is going to draw more attention to it and allow the promoters to have a field day with marketing exposure with plenty of headlines to choose from. Not many series got the entire sim racing community talking as much as the Porsche Esports Super Cup did, so clearly there is some method in the madness. As a whole, did I like the format and do I think the format worked for bringing attention to the series? Whilst I know I may be on the majority for this one, I actually think it did exactly what it was supposed to and I quite liked the format used in the first season and I'm hoping that it gets retained for season 2. These kinds of events could begin to shape more high level events across the racing esports world which I think is only going to be a good thing for growing the sport and gaining exposure. It provides more side by side action which even first time viewers of the sport 
can understand is exciting and intense. Not to mention that the attention span required to follow the race in sprint races is a lot less of a demand too, so less viewers will be likely to be leaving halfway through a race. NASCAR in the real world said that this was one of their biggest motivations to go to the somewhat controversial staged racing format, so I'm not surprised to see esports sim racing following suit and being a little bit controversial there as well. New fans who are watching an endurance race for the very first time may not get the same level of excitement or even understanding of an undercut or a driver being able to go two laps longer on a tank of fuel. Not to mention that even for the most experienced endurance racing spectators, if you miss the first two and a half hours of a 12 hour race, you'll find yourself struggling to catch up on the strategy play for quite some time to truly understand the dynamic of the race. That's just the way the format is run. It very much requires you to be involved from the start of the event to understand it in full, whereas sprint racing, this isn't as critical. More traditional esports like CSGO are very high paced with very short rounds leading to a constant string of action for the viewers to engage with. If the team a viewer is supporting loses in one round, they'll only have to wait 5 minutes for their team to get another chance and try again. In comparison, the VRS GT World Championship where races are 3 hours to 6 hours long, if the viewer's favourite team they were supporting in that gets taken out on lap 1 turn 1, that is it for the competitor's entire weekend and the viewer is unlikely to continue watching the race for much longer. This is why I feel like for the esports crowd, these shorter, multi-heat, almost rallycross-esque events have the advantage from a broadcast and viewer point of view. It's less catering to its competitors in terms of outright performances provided by them, but more for the entertainment of the viewer and at the end of the day, the viewers have a very, very large say in the series success, more so than the drivers ever will. In my Discord, which if you haven't joined already, link down below, I asked you guys what you wanted to become bigger and more successful. Sim racing, which follows the real world of motorsport, or racing esports with these unique formats, and it was a bit of a split opinion across the board. Brad Wingard saying he would actually like sim racing to be closely matched with what we see in the real world over these esports events as that he thinks they feel more synthetic and it doesn't capture the essence of why the majority of us want to get into these games. He says he did find series like the Gfinity Supercar series entertaining, but the more realistic series is more captivating to the masses. Cam Dance didn't think he could choose one over the other and that both could be as successful as each other, which I wholeheartedly agree with in that ideal situation that both could be as popular as each other. But personally, I feel like these shorter events are just going to develop a very unique fan base to the sport, which will benefit its growth. And with sim racing right now, we are in this unique stage where we are all chasing growth and gaining exposure. Either way, the sport is on the up, which is fantastic, and it's still very early days to see where exactly it could end up heading. But we are just beginning to get our very first glimpses now. More money is being invested, more exposure than ever being provided onto our sport. It is certainly a very interesting time to be involved in this once niche world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your support once again. My last video broke even more personal records for me, including fastest ever time to 1000 views, which is just mind boggling to me, as well as surpassing 500 subscribers after I've only just recently restarted this channel with brand new content. I'd like to let you all know I'm wholeheartedly committed to bringing you consistent uploads throughout 2020 and actually moving back to two videos a week once I get a couple of projects in the background sorted. So big things are coming to the channel, but until then, I'd really appreciate if you enjoyed the video, you hit that like button, and even, maybe, just maybe, consider hitting that subscribe button. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of here. Peace.